Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Kerry Williams. <laughs> A big part of what Amnesty does is education, and I think education is incredibly important. I was coming, a teacher in the audience, well, well done. Uh, my daughter, she's like fifth form, or whatever year, whatever it is they call these days. And uh, I was coming out tonight, and she's supposed to be doing this science project to catch her up, she's behind. And she's goofing around, so I think, okay, in the story, I'm a responsible parent. So what can I do? How can I motivate her? How can I press her buttons to make her more into science? Where's a, a positive female role model from the world of science? And I say, hey, Isabel, do you think Marie Curie, discoverer of x-rays, inventor of radium, would have been as successful as she was if she'd goofed around on her science homework? And she turns to me and goes, Dad, I think you'll find it's pronounced Mariah Carey. <laughs> People who know who Mariah Carey is... People who know Marie Curie is, you guys. <laughs> and education doesn't have to be in a formal situation. You can, you can use it in your family every day. We have this thing we call Gourmet Night, where we throw a, a dart at the world map. And whichever country it lands in, if it's your turn, you're going to make a three-course meal for the family from that country. Last weekend, I got turkey. It's oh, fantastic. I can make my, my famous homemade hummus. And I'll get Granddad involved, because he's a classic Kiwi, you know, meat and three veg kind of guy. Let's, let's cosmopolitan him up a little wee bit. And so I take him to the supermarket to get the, the sesame oil, the tahini, my secret ingredient. We go into the countdown, and it's not in the exotic aisle, it's not in the international aisle. Go to the chiller section, there's no tahini. So I go to the uh, 18-year-old dude behind the counter. Hey, uh, mate, what, what, uh, what happened to the tahini? He goes, oh... I think it sank in Wellington Harbour in 1968. <laughs> well, Granddad's going, uh, I'd like some fellatio, please. <laughs> it's pronounced focaccia! <laughs> We've talked about this, Granddad. And all this you know, international conflict that Amnesty deals with, the, the answer lies in the family and in the community. And you can see the conflict we get in communities, even in comedy shows. You know, uh, sometimes uh, Ra Radar as MC would come out and say something like, oh, who are you all from? Or, who, anyone on tonight from, uh, from uh, West Auckland? And all the Westies go, hey, because that's what Westies do. And say, is there anyone on tonight from the North Shore? And one lady back goes, that's not what normally happens. Normally she says, be quiet, Gerald, they'll steal our car. <laughs> And wherever you go, you go around the country. We take a show down to Christchurch a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I forget to repress the fact that I'm from Auckland. And there was a woman pretty much where you are there, madam. I'm 90 seconds in. She just stands up right in the middle of my set and goes, Oh, you're all from Auckland. It's so violent up there. There's no community spirit. You don't even know your neighbours. Look, madam, I refute your comments. I disagree. My children and I, we met... All our neighbours last weekend, a little soiree that we in Auckland like to call a armed offenders call out. <laughs> I wish that was a joke. Uh, again, wherever you go, years ago, about five or six years ago, I was doing my midlife crisis thing. I went overseas, went off the grid, bit of a surf jungle trip in Indonesia. Two weeks I went without speaking to anybody else who spoke English. I treat myself to a night in the resort at the end, a bit of a shower, a bit of a shave, go down to the bar, middle of, of an Indonesian jungle, and there's a guy at the bar wearing a white Waikato rugby jersey. So I go up to him, oh, who's going to win the uh, Super 12 this year, bro? And he goes, uh, just way I'm contracted de Marseille, a canton de New Zealand, a battle, a contract de Marseille, a And it was about this stage I started to suspect he might not be from Hamilton. <laughs> it, Turns out his name was Jean-Luc and he was a boat builder from Marseille and he'd come to the viaduct to build a boat and that's where he got the jersey. And I was immediately struck by the irony of a Frenchman coming to the viaduct to build a boat. <laughs> I did that at a pub once with an audience of 20-year-olds, Rainbow Warrior reference. <laughs> Come on, teacher, do a better job. Teach the kids. <laughs> wherever you go, man, wherever you go. And racism, prisoners, injustice, whatever it is, it starts small. Remember years ago, Eskimo lollies were supposed to be racist? 
all the political correctness. When my boy was maybe four, we're going through the supermarket, and he's running down the, the, uh, the cookie aisle, and he's pointing at what he wants, going, Samoa cookies, Samoa cookies! And I look at it, it's a clear plastic bag full of brown cookies covered in coconut. <laughs> oh my God, that's so inappropriate! And it turns out he wasn't saying Samoa cookies, he was wanted some more cookies. <laughs> it wasn't racist. It wasn't racist. It was all just a, a delicious misunderstanding. Uh, it turned out they were Afghans. So, uh... <laughs> not racist at all. I guess, I guess Amnesty's poster child would, would have been Nelson Mandela. You know, all those years in captivity, got out, amazing things done. Um, a huge, yeah, one, one person clapping for Nelson Mandela. That's probably about appropriate. I bought his book, his autobiography, when it came out, Long Walk to Freedom, the movie's out now, and it was reviewed, and I won't say which paper it was, Greatest Man of the 20th Century, his autobiography got four and a half out of five stars. And I rang up the reviewer and said, hey, why the hell didn't you give it five stars? And the answer was, and I quote, oh, it was a bit slow in the middle. But, you know, kids, my boy's a teenager now, no one reads. No one, if they read, it's online. And I think you know you've got a pretty serious addiction to online porn if the pages of your iPad stick together. <laughs> one guy laughing way too much in the front row. Way too much. And technology's not always what it's cracked up to be. Uh, you might not realise this, along with everything else, that, uh, International Press Freedom Day, it's actually, uh, tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of the first ever text being sent within New Zealand. It was sent 20 years ago on the Vodafone network, and they're very hopeful it's going to arrive any day now. <laughs> but one of the things you want to do as a, as a, as a community is, is hold on to your community and not let multinational corporates leverage it for their own gain. You know, I love McDonald's, I love them in the, as a community citizen, but leave our communities to our community. And one of the things they're subtly doing, the new form McDonald's, when you go up those, you've got the two-lane drive-through, merge like is it the first window and the second window, in between now, they've all got a big photo that represents the local community. Like uh, my neighbourhood's uh, Myringi Bay, a lot of yachting going on, so there's photos of yachts. The one near uh, Eden Park, obviously rugby pictures of rugby players. And the one in Henderson, their photo has been stolen. <laughs> Hey, that's my time. I'm Terry Williams. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you for supporting Amnesty.